right, good morning you guys and welcome to another session of uh, ArtsQuest's Stay Creative series for ArtsQuest at Home. Uh, today I'm actually going to show you how to make Play-Doh out of household ingredients. A lot of the recipes I worked up were looking for things like cream of tartar, uh, which yes, some people have at their house, but I personally do not. So I've looked at a bunch and found a recipe that will hopefully work with just flour, oil, salt, and some lemon juice. Um, I haven't tested it yet, so this will be an experiment for all of us. Um, but I personally, I mean, I like to squish things, especially when I'm stressed. Like I love all of the like thinking putties and um, kinetic sand and stuff, and I am sure a lot of kids do at home. My sister told me that uh, she has kids under the age of five, and she said she never wants to play with Play-Doh again, so maybe making it would be better, who knows. But what we're going to start out with, uh, first we have to make, most of them call for cooking, and I don't feel like doing that, so we're going to use the microwave. Uh, but I'm actually going to squeeze a lemon. The recipe I found called for three tablespoons of lemon juice, so if you have bottled lemon juice, I say go for that. I personally don't, and I also don't feel like measuring, so I'm just going to squeeze this and hope for the best. Um, overall, we want three quarters of a cup of water plus lemon juice. Uh, so I'm just going to go to my sink and fill up this measuring cup to three quarters. Alrighty, so I think I'm, I'm actually up to a little bit more than three quarters of a cup now. A fun vocab word for you to think about at home is meniscus. That's the curved line you'll see when measuring liquids in a measuring glass, and you want to measure from the bottom of that curved line. I have a little bit more than three quarters of a cup, but hopefully it's not the end of the world because I'm going to try it anyways. And I'm actually going to microwave this just to save on like having to show you what my kitchen looks like because it's not not that great. Uh, and I'm not sure that this is a microwave safe measuring cup, so I'm going to just pour this into this bowl that I know is. And I do believe um, we want it to be close to boiling or just about that. So I'm going to try three minutes. We'll, we'll see what happens. While that's microwaving, hopefully this, the sound doesn't get all messed up here, but while that's microwaving, I'm going to measure out my dry ingredients. I want a cup of salt and a quarter, or no, a cup of flour and a quarter cup of salt. All right, so my water and lemon juice mixture just came out of the microwave. If you are doing this at home, make sure you have an adult help you take it out of the microwave because that bowl's super hot and the water inside it also super hot. Um, another thing I wanted to say, if you don't have a lemon or lemon juice, you can probably also use vinegar. I think you just want something acidic to make it fine. Uh, but I'm actually going to add my food coloring now to this water mixture. If you don't have food coloring at home, you can just make it without a color and that's that's fine. It's just not as pretty, I guess. And uh, while I was waiting for the water to cook, I was debating what color I wanted and decided to go for purple. So I'm mixing blue and red together. If you're ambitious, you could actually probably make four batches of this and do whatever colors you want to, but I didn't really want to waste the flour. Okay, so now that it's mixing, I'm going to very carefully pick up my very hot bowl and pour this mixture in with my dry ingredients. Hopefully not spilling everywhere. Cool. And while we were waiting for the microwave to go, my roommate found me a plastic spoon so I can mix without getting my hands all hot. And I'm just gonna do kind of start to mix it up, but not too much because now I'm actually going to add in a tablespoon of oil. And I think you can pretty much use any sort of liquid oil. I'm using vegetable oil, but if you don't have it, you could do like canola oil, olive oil, coconut oil, whatever works. So I've got my oil in there. And now I'm just going to keep mixing until it forms a dough. And from what I've read, it might be a little bit sticky while the water's, or like the water mixture in there is making it super hot, but as it cools down, it should slowly start to kind of thicken up a bit. Uh, so you don't ne necessarily have to add more flour if it's too sticky. 
I'm gonna get my hands in there. I will say at this point, it's still pretty hot, so that's a consideration, but I'm forming this ball of dough now with the flour. It is still pretty sticky, as you can see, but it's starting to kind of form together a little bit. I still have all this flour mixture in there at the bottom that I'm just gonna keep mashing together. All right, so my Play-Doh is still a little bit goopy here. I'm going to wind up uh, maybe putting it in the fridge for a little bit to see if that makes it harder. Um, one thing I'll say, I wish that I had actually divided my dry and wet ingredients into two so that I could have two colors, but uh, that's something you guys can learn from my mistake instead. Because this, All right, and if you're at home wondering how you can connect this into your schoolwork, uh, this is a great way to practice measuring and skills like that that you would use in math and science. Um, it's also fun to experiment with color mixing like we did with uh, the food dye here. Um, and once it's actually uh, set enough that you can um, make a sculpture out of it, it's a great way to practice like building, forming shapes out of 3D stuff. Uh, and if nothing else, it's a great stress reliever to play with this gooey mass. Uh, I love it. I know a lot of other people are into it, and that is why slime is so big right now. Uh, but we'll check in again once this has set a little bit more. Uh, so. All right, and it's been, I don't know, maybe three, four hours since I put this in the fridge, but now it is looking and feeling more like what Play-Doh should look like. Um, so you can use it just like you would ordinarily use Play-Doh. If you were smart enough to make two colors or had the option to make two colors, uh, you know, you don't want to mix it together too much. Mine wound up turning out a little bit gray. I maybe added too much blue or red or both to it, but I kind of like it. Uh, and just like normal Play-Doh, if you leave it out, it's going to dry out. So if you want to be able to keep playing with it on down the line, I'd stick it in a plastic bag and maybe even into the fridge. But if you like your, a sculpture that you make a lot, you can always just leave it out to dry and in a day or so it'll be hard enough that it'll stick around forever. So uh, if you enjoyed the project and if you make something that you want to share with us, please uh, tag us on social media. We've been using the uh, hashtag quarantine art club and BF Quarantine Art Club, and you can tag us at Banana Factory underscore PA for a chance to be on our story. Uh, and also check out Arts Quest at Home, our webpage. We have all kinds of good content there. We have concerts, comedy, dance, um, and other virtual art workshops like this one. Uh, so thank you, and goodbye.